Malachim Bet, 2 Kings chapter 25. So in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, marched against Jerusalem with his entire army. He set up camp against it and built siege towers against it on every side. The city remained under siege into the eleventh year of King Zedekiahu. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when the famine in the city was so severe that there was no food for the people of the land, they broke through into the city. All the soldiers fled by night through the gate between the two walls, near the king's garden, because the Kazdim were surrounding the city. The king took the route through the Arava, but the army of the Kazdim went in pursuit of the king and overtook him on the plains near Jericho. All his troops deserted him. Then they took the king and brought him up to the king of Bavel in Rivlah, where they passed judgment on him. They slaughtered his sons before his eyes. Then they put out Zidkiyahu's eyes, bound him in chains, chains, and carried him off to Babel. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which was also the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, Navuzaradan, Adan, the commander of the guard and an officer of the king of Babel, entered Jerusalem. He burned down the house of Adonai, the royal palace, and all the houses in Jerusalem. Every notable person's house he burned to the ground. The whole army of the Kazdim, who were with the commander of the guard, broke down the walls of Jerusalem on every side. Navuzar Adan, the commander of the guard, then deported the remaining population of the city, the deserters who had defected to the king of Babel, and the rest of the common people. But the commander of the guard left behind some of the poor people of the land to be vineyard workers and farmers. The Kazdim smashed the bronze columns in the house of Adonai, also the trolleys and bronze sea that were in the house of Adonai, and carried their bronze to Bavel. They also took away the pots, shovels, snuffers, pans, and all the bronze articles that had been used for worship. The commander of the guard took the censers, the sprinkling bowls, everything made of gold and everything made of silver, the bronze in the two columns, the one sea in the bases, all of which Shlomo had made for the house of Adonai, was more than could be weighed. The height of one column was thirty-one and a half feet, on it was a capital of bronze five and a quarter feet high, with netting and pomegranates all around the capital. All of bronze, the second column, was similar, also with netting. The commander of the guard took prisoner Sarayah, the chief Kohen, Zechariah, the second-ranking Kohen, and three doorkeepers. From the city he took an official in charge of the soldiers, five close associates of the king who had been found in the city, the army commander's secretary in charge of military conscription, and sixty of the common people found in the city. Navuzar Adan, the commander of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babel in Rivla. There in Rivla, in the land of Hamat, the king of Babel had them put to death. Thus Yehuda was carried away captive of his land, out of his land. Navuk had Netzar, king of Babylon, appointed Gadal Yahu, the son of Akikam, the son of Shaphan, governor over the people remaining behind in the land of Yehuda after he left. When all the army officers and their men heard that the king of Babel had made Gedaliahu governor, they came to Gedaliahu in Mitzpah, Yishmael the son of Netanya, Yohanan the son of Kariak, Sarayah the son of Tanhumet the Tophati, and Yaazayanhu the son of Maakati, they and their men. Taking an oath, Gedaliahu said to them, don't be afraid of the servants of the Kazdim. Just live in the land and serve the king of Babel, and things will go well for you. But in the seventh month, Yishmael, son of Netanya, the son of Elishama of royal blood, came with ten men and assassinated Gedaliah and the Judeans in Kazdim, who were with him in Mitzpah. In the wake of this, all kinds of people, great and small, as well as the army officers, set out and went to Egypt, because they were afraid of the Kazdim. In the thirty-seventh year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, Evil Merodach began his reign as king of Babel, and in his first year he commuted the sentence of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, and released him from prison. He treated him with kindness and gave him a throne higher than those of the other kings there with him in Babel. So Jehoiakim no longer had to wear prison clothes. Moreover, he was provided with food as long as he lived and he was granted a daily allowance by the king to spend on his other needs for as long as he lived. End of the book of 2 Kings. End of 2 Kings chapter 25.